Okay, for online students, this is me running through the problem, kind of talking as I go. The AP class in person gets to grade my work, because that'll be really fun. Uh, okay, we've got a solid cylinder, it's got the mass and radius, and we've got a block of just a little less mass. It's got about 80% hanging from it from a string. Physics strings are massless and unstretchable imaginary objects. Okay, okay, it's explaining that. Part A. Using integral calculus, it demands it. Show that the rotational inertia of the cylinder about its central axis is one half m r squared. Holy smokes, I better know what rotational inertia is. It's r squared dm. What's a dm? It is the side on inertia of a cylinder. It's each point on a cylinder. Oh, it's the density of the cylinder times dv. But the cylinder is going to have a length. Do I need to do this whole derivation? Negligible friction. Axis is one half mr squared. Yeah. So I have a cylinder. I need the volume. It's going to have a length. So the, the density of the cylinder, I need to really get extra page here. Okay. My density is going to be the mass of the cylinder over pi r squared. And that's going to be capital R. Pi r squared L. Fantastic. An element volume we're going to do like tubes here and add them up. It says uniform density cylinder, right? It sure does. Okay, so my volume density is going to be L for the tube, and then it's for a 2D grid, it's R, dr, d theta. Oh my, that's why I have so much page. <clears throat> okay, show the rotational inertia is that. Okay, so then I write these squiggly symbols. If you just, if you know some calculus, I am doing the integral. I'm going to take, first I'm going to take theta from 0 to I think 2 pi. We're going to go all the way around, yeah, to 2 pi. And we're going to take r from 0 to big R. And we do r squared times dm, which was rho dv. So I just multiply all this stuff, big M pi r squared L. This was really easier on a big whiteboard. Oh, look, times dv, times big L, times little r, times dr, d theta. Now, you don't need to know this today, but the r squiggly line is linked to this dr, like they're a pair. And the, the theta squiggly line is linked to this d theta. So really, all I'm messing with is this stuff in between. And it simplifies quite a bit. Look, those cancel. We got a pi. We got an m on the bottom. We got three little r's. r1, r2, r3. Can I extend it more? Oh, my goodness, I can. OK. So I am doing, oh, and there's no thetas in there. Turns out you just multiply then by 2 pi. If you, if you integrate 1 or a bunch of constants, you just multiply by this thing at the end. Well, minus 0. OK. <clears throat> so my i, I'm going to grab just the r's. I'm going to bring all these constants out. Is 2 pi times big M, we canceled our l's, uh, over pi times r squared. Looks like a, bit, a little bit of a half, but it's wrong. The half is in the wrong spot. So then I'm doing an integral of r cubed from r to 0 to big R dr. Turns out there's this magic procedure where I add, that means just add 1 to the exponent to make it 4, and then divide by 4. Will it work again? It did. It's just making the page longer and longer. Awesome. Okay. So my pi's canceled, my 2m's, 
i equals 2 big M over big R squared. That looks wrong. But now I substitute. I had R to the fourth power. 3 plus 1 equals 4. Big R to the fourth power divided by 4, which cancels those two and makes this a 2. And 2 over 4 is 2, which is, I'm going to just in your face, college board, it's MR squared over 2. That's the whole derivation. And that took a long time. I hope that's worth a lot of points. Nine and a half minutes. Okay. <clears throat> the block is released from rest. The string unwinds, causing the cylinder to rotate the rod. Calculate the linear acceleration of the block. Oh my. <clears throat> okay. Well, the acceleration is the sum of the forces on the block uh, divided by the total mass. Um, you could also say, and now the angular acceleration of the block has to be equal to the sum of the torques on the block, because that's really what we have, the sum of torques, divided by rotational inertia. Okay. <clears throat> so, oh, calculate the net torque exerted on the cylinder. calculate the tension in the string. So this is very much like your first problem, where you had the block. The tension will be whatever it needs to be in the middle. So I don't really want to depend on tension. That's a good thing to do last. Calculate the net torque exerted on the cylinder. Um, that's actually really easy if I jump back the pictures. Okay, because the only torque is the radius. Torque is radius cross force. So the only torque is the the tension on the string exerted by this block. And the block accelerates. So I'm going to have a bunch of equations and I'm going to have to write small. Okay. <clears throat> There's only one torque. Uh, we're going to have our angular acceleration, which equals this linear acceleration divided by capital R, by the way, because they're attached. Okay. And my only torque is. Was there a symbol for the mass of the block? It just says big M for both. We'll call it mass of the block. Mass of the block times G times R. No, it's not. Not at all. It's the force of tension in that string times R. That's my torque. OK, divided by the rotational inertia which is mr squared over 2. We already figured it out. Okay, we don't need the block. It's not rotating. It has no rotational inertia. And the linear acceleration of the block. Okay, the linear acceleration of the block has this force of tension. Oh, look. I'm seeing a clue here. Look, I can actually kind of solve this one. I better go fast, because I might be doing too much work. Okay. Acceleration of the block is the force of tension pulling up minus, uh-oh, we better do magnitudes. Should we? No. I made that positive. Let's not do magnitudes. The tension will pull the opposite way because this acceleration is going to go down. It's going to go forward, right? This is forward direction. <coughs> Plus the mass of the block times g divided by the block, mass of the block. That's the acceleration of the block. Now they're attached, so they have to have that relationship. OK, calculate the linear acceleration of the block. Holy smokes, I better be able to solve this problem. Let's set those accelerations equal. So we canceled one r from there, from the top. If I multiply that one over there, that gets rid of r too. Oh, so this a, right? I solved the capital R is equal to force of tension again um, times r squared. Nope, times no r's at all, times 2 over, this is mass of the block, isn't it? Nope, that's mass of the cylinder, mc. OK, mass of the cylinder. Oh, my. 
can I group those two together and get FT? Because if I plug in FT, I've got all constants. I sure do. Okay. So, I'm solving this guy. Let's split those and add that over there. So on this side, I just have G equals force of tension times 1 over MB plus 2 over MC. Fascinating. And that's it. So the force of tension, oops, watch out. Let's extend a couple times. This fraction is also, if I do common denominators, it is MC plus 2MB over, whoops, MB times MC. Is that fraction? So the force of tension is just G over this is just, whoops, I shouldn't have put that A there. It's G, MB, MC, and then there's a 2 under there, MC plus 2 MB. And if I know the force of tension, haha, -ha, I just multiply like A over R. So A equals, and I probably got the other pieces along the way, A equals, with no R's, force of tension over, oh sorry, 2 times the force of tension over MC. Right there. Okay, so that means 2 times this, cancel on MC, A equals 2MBG over MC plus 2MB. I promise I can write better in person. That's number one. Calculate the torque exerted on the cylinder. Um, T equals I alpha. We'll color code it. It's going to get even smaller. Torque equals I alpha. And alpha is A over R. So, well, i got to multiply. So, we multiply MR squared, mass of the cylinder, excuse me, squared over 2, times alpha, which is this divided by R. So let's put one R in the denominator, times 2 MBG MC plus 2 MB. Oh my goodness. Uh, we get one more R gone, we get the 2's gone. Okay, so the torque is, that's a G, is just MC, MB, G over, do I have an R? I better have an R. Yep, there should be one left. And then divided by MC plus 2 MB. And that's number two. Isn't it? And calculate the tension on the string. Oh, I think I already did. <laughs> um, the force of tension is MCA over 2. MC times acceleration over 2. Um, I know I'm going to run out of time, so I'm leaving it at that. A minute and a half. Oh, no. Let's see how many points I really get. The block has reached its lowest point, and the cleaves is creeping around. It begins to rewind on the cylinder, and the mass is raised back up. Sketch the angular momentum of the cylinder as a function of time from the moment the mass is released shortly after to shortly after TS. Okay. So when the mass is released, the angular momentum is going to be zero. and then it's going to increase to a maximum and then what happens is it's turning kinetic energy back to there. So I think it's going to linearly increase. And that's it. It doesn't say to label anything. The cylinder is replaced by a hollow cylinder where your I is now MR squared, not one half. The hollow cylinder will rotate around the central axis with negligible friction. It's wound around the cylinder same initial position, but it's interesting, it's the time it takes, okay, with more inertia, it's going to take longer time. TH for hollow is going to take greater time. More I is more inertia. Less alpha for same torque. 
Oh. Greater time. I checked it. Okay. I'll make sure that's a reasonable length video. Ooh, 15.